the, uh, uh, this is semi-plenary session number three on financial econometrics. Uh, this session consists of a two uh, 40 minutes talk, and we are very delighted to have two distinguished scholars to present their work. The first speaker is Professor Jian Qing Fan, who is Frederick L. Moore, 18, Professor of Finance and Chairman of the Department of Operations Research and Financial Engineering at the Princeton University. Professor Fan was elected to Academician of Academia Seneca last year, so his talk today is designated as part of a 2014 Symposium for Newly Elected Academician, which is a program launched by the Academia Seneca before its biennial Academician meeting in early July. Professor Fan will talk about his recent work on testing factor pricing model when the number of assets are much larger than the length of time series. Let's welcome Professor Fan. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. And the best job is to ha have one stone, two, uh, two birds. So I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, the talk today is on panel tests of factor, uh, factor pricing model. And it happened to be the same topic as the last year's Nobel or, I mean, prize. <clears throat> uh, so I will introduce large, large te panel tests for factor pricing model. And then I'll, in particular, uh, introduce a new principle, uh, power enhancement principle. And I'll give you two examples of these kind of tests. And uh, we'll develop, in particular, uh, high-dimensional war statistics and then give you some numerical studies. <coughs> so uh, uh, large panel studies. So multi-factor model, well, uh, introduced by Ross and Merton, postulate how uh, financial returns are related to the uh, market risks. So uh, it has um, wide applications in portfolio allocation, uh, fund performance evaluation, and certainly include the assets pricing model as a, a capital assets pricing model as a specific example. <clears throat> so in nutshells, uh, we basically say that you have uh, large panels, uh, many assets, and uh, you decompose the assets return of uh, individual assets into um, uh, the part that depends on the common factors, and the part is idiosyncratic, and this is always, you can always do orthogonal decomposition, and then the uh, plus the intercept part, okay? <clears throat> so you have a lot of uh, uh, assets, and you have observed data o over a short time period, and you like to test uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the factor pricing model imposed further that uh, uh, that all risk being compensated so that uh, there's no extra uh, market offer uh, available to you. So this is the test. And uh, this should hold for all the assets, not only for a few assets. So that the question is uh, how do we, uh, I mean, test using all the assets? So now uh, before we answer this question, natural question you may ask is uh, what is the challenge you are talking about? So first is the number of assets could be much larger than sample size. Uh, the second is that, uh, I mean, the market beta uh, is <laughs> one period model is time varying, uh, and uh, you cannot use too big the time horizon. And the third is that the data at daily level, the return at daily level, certainly are dependence and heavy, heavy tails. So uh, the solution to those three uh, challenges <coughs> in the uh, traditional uh, task is that uh, you use monthly return, so the monthly return certainly will depend, uh, reduce, resolve the third problem, and uh, certainly you don't hope that your time horizon is long, so hopefully that uh, uh, the varying data will be more or less constant, and then also based on 25 to, well, 5 to 25 portfolios, so in this case, n less than p. So this is the traditional solution, so typically people use 60 monthly returns, based on five to 25 portfolios uh, in hope to solve uh, these three challenges uh, based on classical type of tests. So there are certainly a, cer uh, a number of problems associated with this. First, uh, group into a small number of portfolios, uh, loss uh, data information. This is the first principle of economics we all learn. <clears throat> and also create a bias sampling, like data smoothing, bias sampling. Uh, many biases arises once you create five to uh, 
25 testing portfolios. And certainly you can easily do individual tests, but now uh, how, do you, how do you aggregate those N, let's say 500 of uh, test statistics to control over all five is one of the challenge. So the most uh, classical version of combining individual tests into one uh, single test <coughs> is the war type of statistics. So let's uh, assume for a moment that uh, the error uh, very, uh, the error, the, uh, the covariance of these equal sinclair error is known to you, uh, then, you uh, then you could easily uh, follow classical linear model. You could easily show that uh, the, uh, the, you could easily compute the standard error of uh, these alpha vectors, and in which a t is just a constant that de uh, of order t, but depend also on the design matrix uh, f. So the detail is not important. This is really a simple linear model that we all uh, follow upon. <clears throat> so you could construct a raw type of uh, statistics, and we know that raw type of statistic, when degree of freedom is large, is approximately uh, normal distribution uh, with mean uh, and the variance one. So, uh, so this certainly uh, method avoid uh, information loss and selection biases, but there are a number of challenges associated with that too. Right? So first, you had to estimate a large uh, um, covariance matrix, let's say 500 by 500 of, them of these equal syncretic errors. <clears throat> and secondary, uh, it's unclear that uh, when you estimate this, so this is the, we assume it's known, when you estimate this, the estimation error is negligible. And third, that uh, still there's an error accum <coughs> accumulation, uh, noise accumulation issues because you estimate so many alphas uh, in, in that. Uh, and uh, so, so this, you have very low power uh, un, uh, unless that uh, this alpha is very large. And certainly it will be incapable of uh, detecting uh, the sparse alpha. That is only a few, uh, only a few assets that have uh, extra alphas and most of, alpha uh, most of assets has no alpha. So these are the challenges to these problems. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, one of the problems at least we can be solved uh, is estimating sigma u in version of this one. So this is really the idea. Uh, <clears throat> this is really the, uh, one of these problems can be solved. Uh, so this is the idea of uh, working uh, independent quadratic tests. That is, you just use the diagonal elements and so you ignore the correlation in sigma, and then you do have to estimate a large covariance matrices. Because you are ignoring the covariance here, then the correlation had to come somewhere, so it comes into uh, play uh, here. Right? So this is the, uh, so this is uh, the, indeed the method by Parasan and Makata in 2012, and also has been used uh, in statistics literature. So which is really a kind of hotel and T statistics, but you ignore the correlation in the diagonal. And uh, this is typically uh, less powerful uh, than war test, but this still doesn't not solve the noise accumulation issues uh, in, uh, in uh, high dimensional tests. So, uh, so for today's talk, uh, what I'm going to do is um, introduce uh, the power enhancement principle. So the idea is very, uh, very simple. Uh, so, uh, so here, uh, I have a classical test, like war type of statistics, or like a working independence type of test. So I have classical tests that control very well the size and the null hypothesis. And I, uh, so this is the J1 you have. And I enhance the test by adding a J0 to it. And J0 doesn't pay any membership fee. So when under the null hypothesis, J0 is equal to zero, so therefore, uh, there's no size distortion, right? So J0 doesn't pay entrance fee uh, because under null hypothesis, it's just zero. And the J0 is always non-negative, so therefore you never, uh, you never uh, adjust critical values. So therefore, uh, the, this test J, which is part of uh, J0 plus J1, is always more powerful uh, than original J1, right? <clears throat> and then we hope J0 uh, is stochastically unbounded uh, under, uh, in an area of alternative, so that uh, you get uh, a free admission, but then you also get the power enhancement significantly in 
uh, in a part of the uh, alternative. So this is the, the, the key idea. So the key idea is to take a classical test statistics that is typically have very good uh, size, uh, <coughs> I mean size control, uh, good approximation under null hypothesis. You add in uh, a JZL, which is non-negative, uh, that uh, and has no size distortion under null hypothesis, and then you got a free boost uh, under the alternative hypothesis. So you will see this uh, more clear. Now the question is, how can I uh, get a J1? How can I get this kind of tests? So here I'm just uh, construct uh, one J0 for you in particular. So remember, we run a panel of tests. So I run uh, for each access, I run uh, least squares regression. So I clear a whole test uh, where the alpha is for that particular least square regression is zero or not. So I construct key statistics is your uh, <coughs> alpha j divided by a standard error uh, in the least square regression. And uh, if this uh, key statistic exceeds certain uh, threshold, so the threshold we uh, construct here is basically something large, but very go to infinity, very small. So this is high criticism in the sense that uh, you are not really choosing critical value at a constant, but choosing critical value of something diverging to infinity uh, very slowly. So, in, uh, so this is slightly bigger than uh, noise level. The log n is because I'm going to do uh, n times a hypothesis testing, and so I just adding a log, uh, log t. So, th uh, so this is the extra information I made. So in particular for the application that we are going to apply, uh, T will be equal to 60, 60 monthly data and uh, 500 stocks. So uh, the uh, critical value will be about 3.1, 3.5. Okay, so this is the first step. You do screening. So you only uh, focus on those stocks which have hope to have positive alpha. Right? So you only choose those uh, assets we ha have hope to have some positive alpha. Then the second step is you are estimating the uh, ecosyncratic, the correlates matrix of ecosyncratic errors, right? So after you run regressions, you'll get the residuals for each individual assets uh, at time t. And then you construct sample correlates matrix based on those ecosyncratic errors. And then finally, you do a very simple thresholding principle. That is, if correlation is less than certain values, you threshold to zero, otherwise you keep it. So there's a lot of, uh, there are a couple of like the different uh, thresholding principles here. I'm not going to talk <coughs> in detail, but in essence is that uh, you only pick those assets which have a big correlation uh, in, the, uh, in the diagonal matrix, <coughs> I mean big correlation in the off-diagonal uh, elements. And uh, of course, if I choose this way, there's a, uh, an issue whether the matrix had to be positive semi-definite. Uh, you could easily do projection to get that. Uh, and then finally, you construct a war test based on discrete statistics. So you choose a subset, you construct war test, and this is J0. So this J0, we claim to have the property that we want. So this is the, uh, <coughs> uh, the first one that we show. So the assumption uh, at this uh, hour, probably let me not get into it, but basically saying that uh, if you have a classical test, J1 has a regular distribution F under null hypothesis, and I assume that it has power, high power in a region of alternative A. So this is classical tests, uh, have, uh, has a, a good uh, size control plus has power in one set A. Then the power enhancement, J0 plus J1, J1 is the screen wall statistics, will certainly also go to F this under null hypothesis because the way that we do high criticism screening makes sure J0 equal to zero and we'll see this uh, in the simulation studies too. So the first statement basically saying there's no size distortion. Uh, the second statement basically says our power enhanced tests has high power in the classical one where J1 will work very well and then plus more modern regions in which uh, if there's an off uh, in which we, as long as there's one asset which are, whose offer is big enough, then uh, you'll be able to detect it. You'll be able to uh, reject the null hypothesis. So this is the, uh, the, the power enhancement pr uh, principle. So in other words, our, our idea is that uh, the traditional, traditional tests usually are very powerful uh, outside of some kind of circle and the more modern screen type of tests 
uh, which is a little bit irregular and not hypothesis, uh, is a powerful outside the rectangular. And then at the end of the day, you are p either powerful uh, outside this circle or, or ellipsoid or outside this uh, rectangle. So in other words, <coughs> So the screened wall test is, uh, with high criticism, is a test of any size, uh, because uh, under null hypothesis is, is equal to zero. So uh, we really adding a classical test to make it, uh, to make it uh, no, uh, a proper I mean, test under the uh, neyman pearson uh, paradigm. So uh, what this uh, particular set, that the screen set that we are doing, so the, uh, the particular screen set is basically uh, estimating the sets, right? So this is uh, individual assets divided by is uh, no equal synchronic noise level, uh, big than certain, uh, certain, uh, certain value. So if I call this set is S, so this is, uh, that, that is the set with practically uh, meaningful offers. So if I call this set as S, then, you could easy, uh, then the S hat that we are doing here that is based on marginal uh, t-test statistics with high criticism uh, is really estimating that kind of set, right? trying to learn uh, what that set is. So in particular, we could show that uh, the way we are predicting construct have a sure screening property that is all members in this practically uh, meaningful uh, assets, uh, extra alpha, um, is in our uh, screen set. And uh, if you, in particular, if you really rule out uh, some kind of gray areas, which could, uh, uh, you could even show the model selection consistency. Okay, so now let me give you two examples to construct J, J1, right? So I have construct use J0 based on uh, screened wall statistics, uh, J0. Now, now let me show you how to construct J1. Okay, so the uh, J1, we have two, uh, two ways to do it. Right? So one way is that, uh, a natural way is that uh, you are uh, using uh, working independent quadratic task. So instead of using wall statistics uh, <coughs> or hotel and T type of statistics, you ignore the correlation, right? So you just put the diagonal of uh, your sample correlation matrix of equal synchronic errors into this. Now, because you ignore the correlation, the correlation had to go somewhere. So this is uh, the correlation uh, down there. You have to uh, estimate it. And uh, uh, Parasan and Yamagata this uh, showed that uh, this test statistic would be asymptotically normal with uh, chi-square distribution, uh, with uh, standard normal distribution. So, so this JPY, you could use it as, as our J1, uh, as our classical tests. So this is the, uh, the, our power enhancement tests. So it is the, uh, the screened wall statistics plus uh, working independence type of uh, 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 hotel and tea statistics. Then, we, uh, then you, uh, using the principle we just showed, you could say that uh, this test statistics will be asymptotically normal. Uh, there's no size distortion, and it has high power in the classical domain in which uh, when the alpha, uh, the positive alpha, the L2 norm, or, or or the weighted L2 norm of this alpha, uh, that is, there's a large portion of stock uh, that have positive alpha, plus this more modern uh, type of, um, uh, type of uh, alternatives, that is when only one or two assets uh, that have, uh, have positive uh, alpha. <clears throat> so this is one candidate. The other candidate is natural to replace wall statistics uh, by uh, by, I mean, the estimated sample correlation matrix. Now, uh, because a common factor has been, uh, the common factor has been taken out, uh, because the common factor has been uh, taken out by our, uh, by, I mean, our factor models, so we could assume this sigma is, uh, we could assume this sigma is, uh, uh, is sparse. So, so therefore, you could just replace uh, this sigma by a sparse, uh, I mean, thresholded uh, coherence matrix that I show you a few slides uh, above. I show you a few slides above, right? So you construct, uh, you construct uh, the equal synchronic errors and you compute the sample coherence matrix. Now you apply thresholding. So you, uh, if you do so, uh, so you could get, uh, uh, if you do so, you get a thresholded uh, uh, estimation of this. 
Now the question is, if I replace this one uh, by this one, uh, whether the estimation error is negligible. So this is turned out to be a very challenging issue. So the issue is that we need to show that if you replace uh, the precision matrix based on equal center errors by threshold in precision matrix uh, based on equal center errors, I need something like this uh, to happen. And uh, yet we know that uh, the uh, optimal rates of convergence for the, the error for estimation precision matrix is, is of this order here. MN is the sparsity level, a number of non-zeros of orthogonal elements in, uh, in this uh, precision matrix. And N is the number of assets, and T is the sample size. So this is the, the estimation precision is given by you. So if, if you do just simply apply cauchy schwarz inquiry to it, so at the end of the day, uh, we know that uh, the error uh, you know, to, to converge, you have to have number assets, N uh, is no more than uh, T. Actually, N should be, number assets should be less than uh, the, uh, uh, the number of observations. So this is, uh, this is a very uh, disappointing if we just uh, using the optimal rates of convergence for estimating the precision matrix here uh, into, uh, into the, uh, in, uh, directly into our study. So instead, we actually shown directly based on uh, this, uh, uh, the difference of this as a quadratic function, we show directly that uh, the error is negligible in that using cauchy schwarz inequality that we uh, show here. So at the end of the, the, the day, we do have good piece of news, uh, although it's under uh, limited assumption. Uh, the, uh, so this is the work has statistics, uh, subtract by degree of freedom, divided by uh, like high squares uh, variance. And uh, we, our uh, power enhancement is that uh, uh, screened war statistics plus the, war st the classical war statistics. We basically shown that uh, if error is normal, this is critical for our technical arguments, uh, then uh, the, the test statistics have no size distortion. It still go to a normal zero one, as if what statistic does. And you have a high power, uh, you have high power in uh, the classical domain plus uh, more modern, uh, more modern domain of, uh, uh, I mean more modern uh, domain of uh, test statistics. So this is uh, the power enhancements that we have done. So let me uh, go to numerical studies and hopefully that uh, help you understand uh, what we are doing. So uh, in the design of simulation, so we simulate basically uh, the three factor models and the all parameters involved are calibrated to the daily return of, uh, uh, of top 100, uh, uh, I mean the constituents on SP500 component. Uh, on of uh, HP foundry uh, index. And uh, sigma u, when we need to generate, we generate a, a, a block diagonals of coherence matrix, so which we have around 20 block, uh, blocks. So this representing sectors of each uh, industry. And, uh, uh, and we consider two specific alternatives. One is very sparse alternative, meaning if alpha is not zero, is about 0.3%. Uh, per month, uh, this is uh, uh, ideal. Uh, this is uh, uh, for uh, and typically would be a few. A few. This uh, there will be a couple of uh, those with big alphas, and the alternative is weak signal that that we have about uh, square root n in the m to power power point four. You take uh, you have some signals and the rest are zero. So this is the the design of the tests. And uh, so the first one we use, uh, so this is the, uh, the result we use. So we, uh, we based on T equal to 300, so it's about uh, one year data. And, uh, uh, and the t uh, testing assets, so we have 500 stock, 800, 1,000, and 1,200. And the first one is the uh, Parasan Yamagata test statistics, which is based on the test statistics that ignore uh, the correlation, but then the correlation go to denominator, you estimate and plug in. So this basically showed that the test of this have very little size distortion. And this is the wall test that we were uh, talking about, a high dimensional wall test. So the coherence matrix is estimated by thresholded uh, correlation matrix uh, and then uh, plug it in. So this basically also showed that there's little size distortion. Uh, even though uh, dimensionality is bigger than sample size. 
Now the first one is power enhancement tests. Uh, that is uh, um, uh, Parsons and Magata test statistics, and then plus our screen wall statistics we, uh, we put here. So there are little size distortion, although this one a little bit bigger than I take. Um, and then this is the, uh, the, our wall test plus uh, screen wall test. Uh, so uh, as a power enhancement, so have very little, uh, 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 I mean, <coughs> uh, size distortion. And then the probability of screening, because we're taking high criticism, under null hypothesis, we claim that, uh, that S hat is empty sets, meaning that you, you claim no stock is, uh, has positive alpha. Indeed, it shows like a, a majority, right? I mean, nearly, uh, nearly 100% basically saying that uh, you don't choose any, uh, you do not choose any uh, set as hat uh, to enhance uh, the, the size. So therefore, the, the size uh, distortion is very small. So under null hypothesis, you are knowing is you, you want this to happen exactly. Right? So uh, a majority of time that you select uh, as hat equal to empty sets. So, uh, so for P equal to 500, of course, it's just making these probability a little bit higher uh, and everything else very similar. So now let's consider the alternative hypothesis. Right? Uh, so the first one is, remember the number of non-zeros of us is equal, uh, the, uh, is equal to n divided by t. So the first one has one, maybe two, three non-zero, and four non-zeros. Right? Uh, and now if we look at the uh, a person and Magata test statistics, it has power around this. And when we uh, apply, <coughs> when we apply our uh, screen test, power enhancement test, uh, the power uh, boost uh, significantly. Similarly, <coughs> the classical wall test statistics uh, uh, can be boosted uh, to have much higher power. Uh, and in addition, that uh, uh, the power enhancement does exactly what you want, right? So under alternative hypothesis, you hope that you are able to select, automatically select some uh, stocks to boost the power and indeed, we say that uh, the chance that you select no stock is very small. So you must uh, have select uh, one or two or three uh, stock to boost the power. That's why we get uh, much higher power uh, here. So this is uh, the, uh, the second alternative that I'm showing you. Uh, the third uh, alternative, that, uh, the third uh, example is weak signal. In this case, I have a lot of, a lot of assets that have a very small alpha uh, <coughs> in our uh, example. Uh, so in this case, in this case that uh, uh, you could see that uh, there are still some boost of powers, right? uh, the boosting of powers, and indeed it's in between uh, with about two thirds chance that I'll choose, I'll choose S hat equal to zero. That is the weak, the signal is too, uh, too weak to be detected, and one third chance I'll pick some uh, assets saying that those S hat has positive offer. And, uh, and the contribute to the power. So that's why our test still more powerful than uh, the, uh, than the uh, classical uh, test. So now let me uh, just uh, run uh, the empirical uh, studies uh, to you. So uh, in this case, I have a monthly return of SP, uh, P500 uh, constituent from 80 to 2012. So we run uh, Pharma uh, French uh, three-factor models so uh, at any given time t, we estimate and the test based on rolling window of pre previous 16 months. So standing on today, you are, I ask using, I, I'm, uh, I'm using the data uh, in the previous 16 months to uh, estimate uh, the, uh, the market data uh, and to carry out the hypothesis testing. And, uh, uh, and we set the screen test statistics uh, a high criticism test is a little bit bigger than two, uh, so it's about 3.56, as I uh, mentioned to you before. And uh, so in, for each individual period, let's say standing on today, on average, there are about 618 stocks. And the main reason is that we include any stock once uh, it's entered into SP500 uh, uh, com uh, components. And on average, there's a six uh, <coughs> that we're able to uh, pick up like a, uh, <coughs> 5.5 stocks. So in other words, so if you use high criticism tests, uh, on average, uh, there are about 5.5 assets that uh, 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 that have a potentially positive offer. 
And among those being selected, uh, there are 80, uh, uh, 81 percent of those se uh, uh, select off are positive, and uh, so therefore we basically conclude that uh, as you as you'll see more, uh, if ever a uh, market inefficiency, a uh, market inefficiency is mainly due to a few stocks with extra uh, positive alphas. So uh, so these uh, let me uh, go this. So this is the uh, the p values, the running p values that we run from. Uh, 84, the first, the first da the date that we have five months data before, right, December 84. Uh, and uh, so this is the p-values uh, uh, that we are running here for, the, uh, for three tests, uh, independent tests, uh, war type of statistics, and the power enhancement statistics. And uh, so, of course, our power enhancement statistics, PEM, always have smaller p-value by nature of construction because you've got the uh, uh, free admission without paying uh, membership fee, without uh, without paying uh, critical value. So you always get a smaller p-values. And uh, what we're showing here is the number of assets uh, being picked, uh, the percent of assets being picked by, number of assets being picked by, uh, the percent of assets being picked by uh, the, uh, by the marginal high criticism tests. So when you pick a lot of uh, assets, of course, the p-value will be very small, and, uh, uh, and, and from here you can see that uh, uh, typically is that, I mean, market inefficiency uh, occurs when the individual tests tend to have a uh, positive uh, alpha. <coughs> so here is the, uh, uh, so here is the, uh, the p-value that I show you uh, over this, uh, uh, like a 20, about 20 years uh, monthly test. So it's about 240 tests. Uh, we are running five months, <coughs> I mean, uh, uh, five years uh, running window uh, tests. So this is the p-value for working independence. And uh, this is uh, p-values for uh, war type of statistics. So war type of statistics on overall is more powerful uh, than the, uh, than the, at least for this data, than the uh, working independent type of tests. And this is power enhancement is even have smaller uh, p value than that. So, so here is a few uh, individual uh, assets that we pick up uh, using our uh, power enhancement test. So, for example, uh, so we only presented <coughs> the assets here have positive alpha for consecutive 18 months. Uh, for example, in uh, in 84 period, so Walmart seems to have. Uh, uh, extra alphas on average monthly is 2.75 percent, uh, and uh, let's say going to 90s, Home Depot uh, tend to have positive alphas, and going to 2000s, Apple Computer tend to have uh, positive alphas. So, um, and uh, if we compare this period and study with the event studies, we tend to show that uh, using power enhancement tests, uh, which I'm not uh, presenting here in detail, we're able to. Uh, we were able to see market inefficiency during a few, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, financial uh, disruptions, and uh, uh, so such as like, uh, 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 let's say, such as let's say uh, the Russian uh, debt crisis and so. <clears throat> so, uh, in order to just further show in, show that uh, uh, the inefficiency is there even after adjusting for farmer French three factor models. Uh, we and to show that the, the one that we are picking, high criticism tests, uh, does uh, does tend to pick something with positive alphas. So we just uh, extract. Uh, so we just uh, at e beginning of each month t, we use previous five years, and uh, we just pick those uh, 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 stock assets with a positive market alpha. Now we construct equally weighted portfolios on those uh, positive uh, offers, and uh, we only invest, uh, we only uh, make a decision if, uh, if this set contain at least two assets. Uh, so otherwise we just in, uh, invest in the, in the, uh, in the, the index, and the we uh, will balance uh, monthly. So if we do this empirical toys example studies, so overall monthly assets return over SP500 is about 1%, and we have about two-thirds chance of getting positive ones rather than negative ones. 
So using our uh, high criticism test to select assets, the monthly return is about 1.67 with spend deviation this big. Uh, this is the sharp ratio, and in, this is the contract with, uh, uh, with the SP500 index. And if I just uh, plot a PNL, this is our, our strategy, and this is uh, the SP500. So I assume there's no, uh, I mean, no transaction costs. And this is the SS monthly return for you. And the, the method that we are applied here, um, we are starting here, is not really only applied to testing offer. Uh, I mean, high-dimensional hypothesis testing appears uh, very frequently in, uh, in econometrics. So, for example, you may ask yourself, uh, are the covariance and the response are related? So, in this case, you are testing uh, many, uh, hy not hypothesis, is testing many of those uh, correlation equal to zero. Uh, you, may, uh, you may ask yourself, is covariance and uh, noise epsilon are uh, uh, exogenous? So, in this case, you are testing correlation equal to zero for many uh, covariance if you co uh, collecting high dimension covariance, so this is uh, the similar kind of testing. You may ask in the, uh, I mean, uh, over identification equation holds, and uh, you could uh, do similar if this uh, is a large uh, high dimensional vector. And uh, you could ask in uh, cross-sectional correlationness, you could ask after taking the factor out, whether equal syncretic errors are uh, equal to zero. So these are, uh, these are high, all high dimensional tests. And these high dimensional tests can all be uh, can always be uh, obtained by applying the uh, uh, I mean by applying the power enhancement tests. So let me uh, let me give a quick summary of what we have said uh, what I have said in the past thirty minutes or forty minutes. So we introduced quadratic tests. Uh, so the typical quadratic tests accumulate uh, uh, noise. <coughs> I mean uh, accumulate high dimensional estimation errors. And uh, we introduce a screened wall statistics to boost power under sparse alternatives and, uh, and uh, while maintaining the correct size. And this kind of idea we call power enhancements uh, has many other applications. And uh, we basically say the effect estimation error is negligible under, uh, I mean, conditional sparsity. Uh, even though technical proof is very involved, uh, we have empirically also verified this is correct. And our, uh, our empirical study tends to show that market inefficiency is mainly caused by a few uh, assets with extra returns rather than a large fraction of assets. And uh, we introduce a new trading strategies based on screening tests to show further that uh, the inefficiency of market is there. Uh, even after adjusting uh, three factor more, uh, uh, Farmer French uh, three factors. Uh, thank you very much. A perfect time control. Yeah, we have uh, about five to s seven minutes for questions. Uh, if I may, I have mm -hmm. short questions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, regarding your empirical study, mm -hmm. I wonder whether the, uh, the, the returns you have uh, from your screening test be related to the, some uh, common strategies in, in empirical findings, such as the uh, momentum strategy mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, value investing. Yeah, yeah so um, uh, that's a, a good question. So certainly it's a momentum based, but if you use five years data, barely I would say this is momentum. Right? So momentum is usually based on a month, two months, right? So, uh, so we were thinking that uh, uh, positive offer mean that this particular company like Apple Computer or, or Walmart may fundamentally have better revolutionized skills that haven't been digested by the market. So we are really thinking it's a fundamental rather than momentum type of strategy. But that's just my... So that means another, uh, uh, another check like uh, value investing? Uh, yeah, so we... Yeah. So, I mean, in other words, the way that we use like past five years uh, after adjust farmer French uh, models, if I get a positive offer, I was thinking it's a fundamental due to the company's uh, ability, but haven't been fully digested by the market yet. So that's why we decide to invest the next month uh, and so on. And usually these, when you got a positive offer, you got the positive offer for consecutively 
uh, uh, quite a few months. So in that sense, you do have some kind of momentum components there too. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. If there's no question, uh, let's thank uh, Professor Fang again. Yeah. Thank you. Brilliant talk. <laughs>